The first official report of the Supreme Electoral Council of Nicaragua certified and validated the re-election of President Daniel Ortega after the general elections held on Sunday. On Monday, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov holds talks in Moscow with his Venezuelan counterpart of Alex Plasencia. Sudan security forces repressed protesters who staged a new civil disobedience campaign against the army. From the headquarters of Telesur Industry in Havana, this is from the South. I am Ray Gomez. I will begin with the news. The first official report of the Supreme Electoral Council of Nicaragua certified and violated that the re-election of President Daniel Ortega after the general elections held on Sunday, with the scrutiny of 49.25% of the tallies, the Supreme Electoral Council informed that the formula Daniel Ortega Rosario Murillo obtained 74.99% of the votes counted. In this way, the government of the Sandinista National Liberation Front will lead the country until the year 2027. In second place was Walter Espinosa of the Constitution the Liberal Party with 14.40% of the votes counted. Citizen participation reached 65.34% with more than 1,400,000 votes cast. Thousands of Nicaraguans rejoiced after the announcement and took to the streets in sign of support to the re-election of Ortega and Murillo as legitimate leaders of Nicaragua. We are celebrating the continuity of the revolution, more social projects for the people of Nicaragua. I'm celebrating another victory for the people of Nicaragua, one more victory. May the Sandinista National Liberation Front keep moving forward with Commander Daniel Ortega Saavedra, always forward. While the U.S. and other Western powers try to legitimize Nicaragua's election outcome, let him and let leaders congratulate President Daniel Ortega's re-election and the foremost victory of the Nicaraguan people. Cuban President Miguel Diaz Canal to Twitter and posted, Congratulations to the brother people of Nicaragua, to Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo for the result of the elections on this Sunday, which were a demonstration of sovereignty and civility in the face of a cruel media campaign they suffer. Always have the support of Cuba, a hack. Evo Morales Ayma, former president of Bolivia and indigenous leader in that South American nations, are also wrought in history of profile. With insults, the United States tries to ignore the democratic and sovereign will of Nicaragua. The only pentamen is performed every day in the White House, or where the so-called presidents, instead of serving their people, follow others from transnational companies, armed industries, and the CIA. And the support of Nicaragua's election's outcome, the legitimate re-election of President Daniel Ortega and Vice President Rosario Murillo, increases despite the Western and U.S. attempts to undermine it. Bolivia's government issued a communique through its foreign ministry where it acknowledges the high turnout in the Nicaraguan general elections, as well as the democratic will of the people of that country. And it concludes, we are certain that with a high participation and respect for the popular vote, democracy is strengthened as a full uh, exercise of people's sovereignty. For its part, the Venezuelan government also supported Nicaragua. Venezuela's Foreign Minister, Felix Plasencia, read it, I it, I write it, uh, a communicate, a communicate the states, uh, I mean, tweeted, I communicate the states, quote, the people of Sandino and the Rio have given the greatest demonstration of love for their homeland, of political maturity, and of popular resistance to the titanic pressures of imperialism. Also, the Executive Secretariat of ABOTCP congratulates the Nicaraguan people for their democratic and civic vocation. It also congratulates Commander Daniel Ortega and Rosario Murillo for their re-election as President and Vice President of Nicaragua, respectively. President of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, congratulated the people of Nicaragua for successfully carrying out peaceful elections in the face of the international attacks from the United States government and its allies. Good news, Ernesto. Good news coming from Nicaragua. Good level of popular participation in today's elections. People in peace. 
participate el in the en voting centers. Participando en los centros we de send greetings to the people of Nicaragua. Al pueblo de Nicaragua. We congratulate you in advance Lo for this day de of peace, of participation. De paz, to vote de in Nicaragua, to vote in Venezuela, votar is to give a Nicaragua. step to peace, votar en Venezuela to to progress un paso a la for paz, the prosperity al progreso, a la of our country to país. vote today in Nicaragua. Votar hoy por hoy is to vote en for Nicaragua peace, es votar por is to la vote paz. for the country, es votar is to vote for por la stability, es votar por la estabilidad, for people's por la tranquility, de la gente, for the rights por el to be beautiful Nicaragua. Nicaragua, bella. Nicaragua is a beautiful bella, country. Bella. Es un We país know hermoso, it very lo well. Muy bien. Buenas noches. Also in Nicaragua, international observers from Russia, Abkhazia, and South Ossetia held a press conference uh, to give an assessment of uh, their participation after monitoring the general election process in the country on this November 7. The delegations made up of members of the legislative powers of the Eastern European nations highlighted the high level of uh, citizen participation observed uh, since early in the morning in the Central American nation. In addition, the accompanying delegations highlighted the organizational level of the Nicaraguan authorities, which uh, they asserted uh, has helped the process to take place in a transparent manner. Based on what we are able to see by monitoring the electoral process and the preparation for the elections, we were able to confirm that the constitutional and legislative basis in electoral matters are providing everything necessary to carry out the process in an appropriate, transparent and free environment. I'm very impressed with the uh, quality of the elections. Um, the, every uh, polling station, we've been to many here in, in Leon, have the same rules, have the same access uh, to the voter, that the voters have and access to the representatives of the different political parties observing every step of the election. It's very transparent, it's very, um, very well organized and very impressive. And uh, that's something we don't have in the United States. So it's, um, I, I think this is a real reflection of the will of the people of Nicaragua, uh, the way they've set up this election process. We'll be right back after this very short break. Welcome back. On Monday, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov holds talks uh, in Moscow with the Venezuelan counterpart of Alex Plasencia. The high-level meeting comes after Venezuelan Foreign Minister proposed to hold the first meeting of the Group of Friends in Defense of the UN Charter in Russia. In this regard, the Venezuelan high official commented that it would be the first meeting of the group held in a member country and not in the framework of the multilateral forum. Plasencia reiterated his respect for the principles of the United Nations Charter and clarified that the Moscow and Caracas are working and strengthening the group. At meeting, Plasencia and Lavrov also reviewed the bilateral cooperation mechanisms in the different areas. Foreign Minister Lavrov, thank you for the invitation. For me, it is an honor to be here in Moscow, representing the people of Venezuela and Nicolas Maduro's government in this important nation. As the Foreign Minister said, we have reviewed the most important aspects of our bilateral agenda that are truly paramount. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov says that the bilateral relations between Moscow and Caracas are strong despite U.S. attempts uh, to undermine them. Above all, we have proven that our relation is based on mutual trust, mutual gain, on stability, making it possible to answer any issue that arises. Despite different challenges, obviously in the last years, despite the risk sparked by the COVID-19 pandemic and despite the unfriendly U.S. policies that try to prevent the development of Venezuela's economy and Venezuela's social sphere, all of these challenges, I say again, do not undermine the steady development of our strategic partnership. In other news, in Italy, at least 800 migrants that were rescued in the Mediterranean Sea by a humanitarian ship of a German non-governmental organization, CI. The migrants were found on two boats in the Mediterranean between Wednesday and Thursday. In the group, there are more than 200 children and five pregnant women, CI said in a statement. In addition, some 200 people had to receive medical attention. 
captain on board. The ocean bike a vessel managed by the European non-government organization as well as the Mediterranean is also looking for a board to disembark 340 migrants are rescued at sea. A Mexico, the migrant caravan of its march headed to Oaxaca. The caravan is composed of over 3,000 people from 10 countries. The National Institute of Migration is asking those participating to return to Tapachula, Chapa State, where they can receive assistance with applying for asylum rather than continuing the dangerous journey north towards the United States. The United States reopens its land and air borders to foreign visitors who feel vaccinated against COVID-19 on Monday. The measure ends 20 months of restrictions on travel from around the globe. The separated families are her tourism and stray. And, uh, diplomatic ties. The ban imposed by former President Donald Trump in early 2020 and upheld by his successor Joe Biden has been widely criticized and become emblematic of the upheavals caused by the pandemic. Along the border with Mexico, many cities in the big U.S. states of Texas and California have seen significant economic uh, downturn due to anti-COVID trade restrictions. Local economies are also impatiently waiting for a return to normal. And uh, we're just waiting for the people, our people, to come uh, and visit us too. You know, it's going to help uh, both El Paso and Juarez businesses and, uh, and the economy. Chinese authorities have reported that over three quarters of the population has uh, been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. The National Health Commission reported that 1.72 billion people have been immunized, which represents 75.96% of the population. In addition, the government is uh, already providing booster shots to at-risk uh, groups such as the elderly or customer workers. Almost 38 million shots have already been administered. Health authorities insisted that the objective of this action is the contract of the outbreak, uh, which uh, have been spread in some provinces since mid-October, which have resulted in left uh, almost 900 cases of local transmission. Despite China's efforts to counteract the growth of COVID-19 infections, the National Health Commission announced the detection of 74 new positive cases of the virus, of which 50 could respond to local infections. 35 percent of more cases have also been confirmed. Health authorities are on high alert, fearing a further increase in the number of infections in some provinces. Africa records of more than 8,500,000 infections and about 220,000 deaths as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. In the Africa CDC, the specialized healthcare agency of the African Union, said the death toll from the pandemic across the continent stands at over 218,000. South Africa, Morocco, Tunisia and Ethiopia are among the countries with the most cases in the continent. South Africa has recorded the most COVID-19 cases in Africa with nearly 3 million cases, while the northern African country of Morocco reported 947 cases. For its part, Tunisia recorded more than 700,000 uh, contagions and more than 25,000 deaths. We have more stories coming up after this financial break. Welcome back. Sunday in Sudan, security forces are repressed. Uh, protesters who staged a new civil uh, disobedience campaign against the army, which took cover in the coup of October 25th. Summoned by civil organizations, a group of school teachers are gathered on Sunday before the Ministry of Education in an act referred to as asylum protest. The mobilized citizens are demanded the reestablishment of a civil government that will lead to a democratic transition. This Sunday's protests were quelled by 
security agents uh, who used uh, tear gas grenades uh, to disperse the Pacific agglomeration. According to Sudanese medical authorities, uh, the clash already resulted in 14 fatal victims since the beginning of the violent military sector's reaction. A trusted that has prompted to open the current Sudanese uh, de facto regime. A series of claims uh, from the global community, the state's suspension from the African Union and budget cuts uh, from international aid providers. Niger's President Mohamed Bazoum visited the volatile border region on Saturday to send out for an attack earlier in the week where suspected extremists ambushed a self defense brigade and killed 69 people. The town's mayor was among those killed in Tuesday's attack. Bazoum said that insecurity had increased and compared it to a disease of endemic type, but he sought to reassure residents that it wouldn't last, promising the government was working to end it. Local self defense groups have been helping Niger's military to fight extremists. Have stepped up attacks on civilians this year. The attacks have been blamed on militants owing to ISIS. The modern violence poses a strong threat to Bazoum, who was sworn into office in April, only days after security forces thwarted an attempted military coup at the presidential palace. Insecurity has unfortunately not diminished. It has even increased everywhere. It is like an epidemic. It is like a disease, a disease of endemic type, but God willing, it will not last. We're working to end it. And Libya's ruling presidential council has suspended Foreign Minister Nalia Mangush for administrative violations and barred her from traveling on Sunday. The spokeswoman for the council said that three member bodies suspended Mangush on Saturday for carrying out foreign policy without coordination with the council. There was no immediate comment from the foreign minister, but Libya's transitional government of national unity rejected the council's decision in a statement. The clashes are due to the suspension of Mangush comes after some controversial statements by the foreign minister about the possible extradition of a new suspect Libyan searched by the United States for the Lockerbie uh, attack in 1988, which left a balance of 190 killers. In Palestine, demonstrators are for the streets in solidarity with the young prisoners and hunger strike in prisons of the Israeli occupation forces whose lives or lives are at risk. Holding banners and photographs of the prisoners, social sectors took the roads of the main towns of the Palestinian territory, demanding the immediate release of the prisoners whose lives are in danger after a prolonged fasting protest. The director of international relations of the Palestinian prisoners club, Rayid Amir, said that the situation threatens a martyrdom of the striking prisoners at any moment. Likewise, the leader of the Islamic Jihad movement, Khaled al Bach, confirmed that the mediators have made great strides in trying to put an end to the suffering of the political prisoners. United States Army occupation forces stationed in Syria withdrew this Monday from the territory of the Arab country in what is the largest evacuation in recent years. According to local sources, at least 270 vehicles left the illegal base of Khairab al Jajir in the province of Hasaka in Syria towards northern Iraq. The caravan, made up of 150 refrigerated trucks and 120 trailers carrying armored vehicles, left the Syrian territory. So the, the, I will eat a pass. Members of the pro-U.S. militias settled in the area also accompanied evacuation, the largest in the last few years. The United States Army has systematically supported armed groups and mercenaries opposed to the legitimate government in Damascus and has appropriated the vast oil riches on eastern Syria. On Monday, Iran urged the United States to remove economic sanctions against its country in exchange for its guarantee not to abandon the nuclear agreement and thus safeguard what was stipulated in 2015 deal. A spokesman uh, Sayyid Yadzada explained that, that once the economic sanctions against the country are lifted, the United States must guarantee respect for other nations and international laws, avoiding interference and meddling in the internal affairs of other countries. Therefore, he reiterated that there is uh, there is a no agreement with uh, the nuclear contract. He will not be able to count on an official determination. Due to the situation, Kabitzada insisted uh, that the sanctions against the country must be lifted completely and effectively.
Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa Ghazimi assured that those responsible for his assassination attempt late uh, Sunday night will be arrested and identified at the authorities. The Prime Minister of Iraq assured that, that he knows well the perpetrators of the drone attack against his residents. During his statements, the Prime Minister also ratified that they will maintain the social stability of the country, guaranteeing the security of the country without being disturbed by any kind of aggression. The attack, which allegedly involved uh, explosive-laden drones, came two days after clashes during protests in the capital Baghdad against the results of the country's October 10th general elections. We've come to the end of this brief. Uh, remember, you can find these and many other stories on our website at Telezor English. You can also follow us on social media for all the latest news. Uh, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Telegram. For Telezor English, I'm Ray Gomez. Thank you for watching.